integrity of the 4A women's basketball bracket has held true. The top two teams have moved through to the regional final. From Green Level High School in Apex, North Carolina, the Air Experts Heating and Cooling High School Hoops are presented by MySpot.NC.gov. A date with destiny awaits. The winner plays for the state championship, the two seed Millbrook Wildcats and the top seed Apex Friendship Patriots. Good afternoon, everybody. Patrick Keen is alongside Jay Sonhalter, and Jay Millbrook has won three state championships since 2012. Apex Friendship, the doors on the high school opened six years ago. They were 0-19. Six years later, they're one step away from playing for a state title. Yeah, both teams have been dominant throughout the season, and we kind of felt like we would get to this point. It's been a collision course, and each side has had great years. But th today, it's going to come down to and especially in critical moments, which teams can make the big plays and protect the basketball. All right, you want to talk about some remarkable talent on the court that we're going to see today. Two of the top players in the state and one McDonald's All-American will be facing off today. Yeah, Rachel Douglas from Millbrook, one of the top juniors in the country. She can get to the hoop anytime she wants. She's got outstanding first step quickness on the defensive end. She's going to be at the top of the press. She does a great job just hustling all over the floor and leading her team. She's a double double machine. Now over on the other side for Apex Friendship, McDonald's All-American India Navar. She's been a star since her freshman year. 18 points and eight rebounds. She plays with such a controlled pace. She can get to the hoop. She can shoot the long range three pointer. She gets her teammates involved and she's so versatile. She's going to have a star career for Stanford. All right. So Apex Friendship and Millbrook have actually met one time earlier this year. It was was the second game of the season for Millbrook. It was claimed by Apex Friendship, but a whole lot has changed. So what are the keys for both Millbrook and Apex Friendship as they do yeah. again? For Millbrook today, it's all going to be about creating turnovers on the defensive end. They do a really nice job with their press and then also shooting efficiency from the outside. They've got to take good shots over for the Patriots, crashing the boards and being physical down low and dealing that with the height of the Wildcats will be important. And then transition offense. They want to get out on the run, and that's where they really excel when they get easy buckets. All right, we are 32 minutes away from sending one of these teams to the 4A state championship game next Saturday. Second seed Millbrook at 23 and 3, top seed Apex Friendship 28 and 2 from Green Level High School in Apex. Tip off next. inside Green Level High School, the neutral site for this 4A regional final. Seats about 2,100 for basketball as we get you ready for this regional final. Millbrook and Apex Friendship. Now the Millbrook Wildcats 23 and 3. They claim the state title in 2012, 2013, and again in 2016. All under former head coach Chris East, who is now the AD at Millbrook. So Dan Courtright in his second year trying to lead Millbrook back to a state championship and win his first. And meanwhile, for Apex Friendship, 28 and 2, there is Scott Campbell. 35th year of coaching at the high school level. He's been to a state championship once back in 2006 with Apex, and he has seen this Patriot program from the absolute embryo from year one when they were winless, Jay, in 19 games to now 32 minutes away from taking Apex Friendship to the state championship game. Yeah, both coaches have had outstanding seasons. They've got veteran leaders, young players as well, but it's been their leadership that's really guided them to this point. All right, here we go. Felicia Taylor, our referee, will toss it in the air, and we're underway. Apex Friendship in the home white, Millbrook in the traveling blue. Rachel Douglas, the star for the Wildcats, wearing number five as Ivory Galloway controls the offense here for the Wildcats. There's a look at the starters for Millbrook, brought to you by Air Experts Heating and Cooling. First jump shot of the game is missed by Sanaya Cole, the freshman for the Wildcats, and here come the Patriots down the floor. India Navarre is the star, but the first shot will belong to Leah Anderson for Apex Friendship, and it's a 2-0 lead for the Patriots, and here comes the pressure. And this is what Apex Friendship wants to do. They want to speed up Millbrook and press on the defensive end and the fast break on the offensive side. All right, the starters for Apex Friendship. And there's the first bucket of many for Rachel Douglas. 31 points in the Elite Eight win. 23 came in the second half and a one-point win over Panther Creek. As Jasmine Navarre, the younger sister of Indy Navarre, misses from long range. And Millbrook likes to get out in transition. A little floater on the baseline from Sinai Cole for Millbrook. 
at a 4-2 lead for the Wildcats. And Cole's had such a great freshman year, averaging 13 points per game. She can get to the hoop. She's got that mid-range jumper, and she knows how to create space for her shot. I mean, we see the present of these programs with Douglas and Navarre, but we also see the future of these programs with Cole and Jasmine Navarre. This is a three from the right side, missed by Coleman. Offensive rebound grabbed by Navarre, misses, lost it, and is taken away by Millbrook. And the dribble poked away. It will stay with the Wildcats. So there's a look at Indy Navarre playing what she hopes not to be her final high school game. She's going out to play for the legendary head coach Tara Vanderveer at the Stanford Cardinal, the defending women's national champions from last year in San Antonio. Just crossed 2,000 career points in the regional semifinal win over Green Level a couple of days ago. 4 2 Millbrook. And this is a three from the wing that is missed. And the rebound to the Patriots. So watch Navarre, averaging 18 a game, off the bounce, down the lane, switching hands, and the and one for Indy Navarre. If you haven't seen Indy Navarre and want to know what makes her so good, exhibit A. She can do it all. Rebound, she boxed out Corey McLaughlin after that last shot, dribbles it down the court, and then you see the crossover dribble, and then the power to finish when contact comes to her. She has the focus and she has all the skills. That was a beautiful play for the end one. And the power to finish through Rachel Douglas of Millbrook who collects that foul. And Douglas collects that rebound. This should be a highly entertaining. And stepping on the sideline, Ivory Galloway. Millbrook may not be in this re regional final if it weren't for Galloway. Some clutch free throws in the waning seconds on Tuesday to beat Panther Creek by one. Those are pressure free throws, and we were there for it. And you know, there's so much excitement in the gym after that victory was because of her. She executed right at the end of the game when she went to the foul line. This is Jasmine Navarre, the younger sister of India. Jasmine, just a freshman. She wears number 10. And this is Indy Navarre knifing through, locates the open teammate. Her sister out of the corner misses a three. Offensive rebound, twisting the opposite way, can't finish. And another strong rebound by Douglas for Millbrook. Down the lane, Douglas, a little floater with the right. We saw that on Tuesday as well. Very much under control in traffic in the mid post. Well, Apex Friendship has to get the ball out of her hands. They did not stop ball, and she just simply drove right down the court with the mid range jumper. Navarre off the mark with a three. Carter Ramey the rebound for the Wildcats. Douglas, the pull up three. Anderson the rebound for the Patriots. Apex Friendship, the top seed in the East. Millbrook, the two. So this is what was expected, but the bracket didn't hold in the West. There's a long jumper missed by Anderson, and the rebound springs back out to Apex Friendship. Navarre, nice little lead, bounce pass, and expecting it was Leah Anderson. She has four of the first six for the Patriots. And Navarre averages four assists per game. She does it all, and nice job with the field. The defender coming up, and she dished it off. And that's a five-second violation forced by the defense of the Patriots. Dan Courtright, second year head coach for Millbrook. He did watch the tape a couple of times this week of the game played very early in the season. It was game two for Millbrook. Apex Friendship had already played three or four games at that stage, but he says we are a much, much different team now than we were then. In that ball game, Rachel Douglas fouled out early on. So this is a team that's grown and gotten so much better, and each side really just matured throughout the year to get to this point. And right back to Millbrook, 6-all our score about midway through the opening quarter. Here comes Sinai Cole, and she will set things up for the Wildcats. Rejects the screen, little shovel pass. Douglas had the basketball knocked right out of her hands like a machete. And a steal by the Patriots. Anderson. In trouble. Jasmine Navarre off balance. Oh, how did that almost go down? Did draw the foul. It'll go against Sinai Cole and Millbrook. And free throws on the way when we come back. Just underway, midway through the opening quarter, as expected. Tight one, Millbrook at Apex Friendship Time.
NC 529 is never too late or too early to start saving for education. 6-6 six, six our score, Millbrook Apex, Apex Friendship. And Jasmine Navarre at the free throw line. And first, Navarre makes one of two. 7-6 is the lead for Apex Friendship. Rachel Douglas, four of the six for Millbrook. Sizes up the defender, there's her patented spin move, and that will go for Douglas. And then Navarre came over for the double team and drew the foul, but Douglas with the spin move, then as she got knocked off balance, just the body control, a quick spin move, and then she got hit on the right arm, was still able to finish. Well, that's the area where Dan Courtright, the head coach for Millbrook, said she has really grown in leadership from her freshman year to now the end of her junior year and her upper body strength. Free throw knocked down, Douglas has seven, and Millbrook leads by two. Well, she faces double teams every single ball game. I'm just so impressed with when she's getting opposition coming in her face, especially when she gets fouled, she can just finish with her strong upper body. All right, now full court pressure for the first time applied by the Wildcats. Indy Navarro, though, beats it on the drill pretty easily, then runs through a defender, and it's a blocking foul, though. A couple of the officials were looking at one another. One had a charge, one had a block. The block wins out. This was close as she's driving in. She just goes full tilt. Could have gone either way. Anyway, Robin Clark, number 35 for Millbrook, called for the block. Apex Friendship beat Millbrook by 16 points early in the year. Jasmine Navarre can't finish. Then the basketball poked out of her hands. And then the dribble down the floor is knocked into the sideline, stays with Millbrook. Well, nice job by Millbrook recovering in the zone defense. They have to communicate. Navarre was wide open down in the paint. India threw a beautiful pass to her sister, but they did come over quickly to recover. Uh, Douglas, little lead, bounce pass for the freshman Cole. Too strong with it. And Jada Coleman claims the rebound for the Patriots. Apex Friendship has won seven straight. Millbrook has won 16 in a row. And there is India Navarre with the first three of the game. And it's a 10-9 lead for the Patriots. The three-pointer brought to you by myspot.nc.gov. COVID-19 vaccines available to everyone five and older. Boosters for 12 and up. Find them at myspot.nc.gov. Lewis with the handle. It will stay with the Wildcats, but a high five from Scott Campbell in his seventh year as the head coach of the Patriots with his defender, Jasmine Navarre, who knocked that loose and disrupted the offense. Uh, he's got a versatile team on the offensive side with Coleman and Navarre. Both of them can play the one and the two interchangeable. And on the defensive end, with their athleticism, they can really guard anybody on the court. Each of these head coaches, Dan Courtright, Scott Campbell, said they've tried to make this week after the win in the Elite Eight just as normal as possible in terms of practice, in terms of schedule, and in terms of psyche. A ton on the line as the Patriots turn Millbrook over. In the lane, there's the kick out. And this is a long three off the sideline, missed by Victoria's sign, and Millbrook with the strong side rebound. Pull up, Douglas. Sign the rebound. And ran right into two defenders, but the Patriots quickly get it up the, up the floor. And Jasmine Navarre misses, challenges for her own miss, kept it alive, and still with the Patriots. This is Anderson. And that is going to be an offensive foul on Apex Friendship. And Rachel Douglas setting up in the paint. Nice job on the defensive end. She sees the baseline and then just keeps her feet set, gives up her body. Well, you have to trust yourself and get in early position because Rachel Douglas already has one foul. She will be subbed out for the moment by Dan Courtright. Absolutely great position, absolutely the right call, but it's very risky because we saw what happened earlier in the year when Douglas got into foul trouble. And with the pace of this game, both teams fast break up tempo. It'll be interesting to see how the coaches use their reserves, especially in the first half, to maintain condition and get in the fourth quarter. Well, this is Ivory Galloway, nice little move past Caitlin Littlejohn. McLaughlin up top. This is a three off the wing, two is strong by Clark. Offensive rebound on the inside, and Nyla Brown with her first points of the game to give Millbrook a one-point lead. Millbrook really attacked the glass. Four Wildcats down in the paint, waiting for the board. Only two Patriots. Patriots have to go down and box out. In the lane, sign grabbed the pass, but called for a walk. Minute 44 left in this first quarter. 
Carter Ramey back in the floor for Millbrook. She's a three-point threat for the Wildcats. And we'll see if Douglas gets back in the floor before the end of the quarter. She's on the bench coaching and cheerleading for her squad right now. And there's a turnover with her on the bench. But then the Patriots give it right back. And here comes Jessica Clemens. And they have to honor Ramey from the outside. McLaughlin gives it up. This is Ramey again, a little ball fake. Tries to free herself from the defender's side. Can't do it, but a nice dump down pass. Shot was blocked, but lower body contact by Little John. It'll be a foul on Apex Friendship. And Ellie Moser just kind of presents herself as soon as Carter Ramey went baseline. It was contact with the shoulder, but a good job those two working together. So Mosler for the Wildcats, 5'9", junior, gets a pair. Millbrook's last loss was December 21st, a one-point loss to Hillside. They've lost three games this year, two by a single point, and the other was the 16-point early season thumping to the hands of Apex Friendship. Mosler misses a pair. A lot of tight games, though, especially in the postseason played by Millbrook. Driving attempt, late whistle, foul on the Wildcats. When you talk about the postseason close matchups, is Athens Drive and Panther Creek right down to the wire, and they found a way to win. Here's the foul, the body of Coleman. But those were important victories because in pressure situations, Dan Courtright's team came through in the clutch, big free throws, defensive stands, and that really built a lot of confidence as they moved through the playoffs. Jada Coleman at the free throw line for Apex Friendship. One more coming. She's at the performance forward of Clinton free throw line. Performance, peace of mind. Douglas does re-answer for the Wildcats. Now Scott Campbell admitted to us before the game, you know, his team has only played two close games all year. So there could be an advantage for Millbrook and Dan Courtright, the fact that his team, although they've been in a lot of pressure games in the regular season and in the playoffs, they've won them all. Long jumper is missed by Ramey. And the rebound to Apex Friendship. One minute to go in the first quarter. Drive in from the offside. That is Victoria's side. Beautiful fast break. Ball goes to Navarre, and then immediately she pushes us up the court. Douglas gets the return pass down low, pivots to the opposite side of the rim, and then missed the layup too strong. Rebound by Navarre, and she'll attack hard. There's contact. They let it go, and she drops it in. Little finger roll. Seven in the quarter for Navarre. She puts so much pressure on the defense, and then that sets up the press, and Apex Friendship fried up right now, going on a run. Yeah, Dan Courtright did not want to see a late quarter turnover on a little mini run here by Apex Friendship to take a four-point lead. Yeah, for both teams uh, in this timeout break, each side playing very hard. I think the coaching staffs have to find a way to get the ball out of the hands of the best players. So Rachel Douglas for Millbrook, the Patriots have to try to find somebody else to beat you. And then same thing for Millbrook. You've got to stop the fast break and Indy Navarre leading the way. And here it is quick pass to the outside. And the liquor, keep her eyes up. And Victoria Sign just sprinting an easy layup. But that's because of you know, the skill of Navarre helping out her teammates. And then crossover dribble easily gets to the paint. There's a look at Indy Navarre once to be an orthopedic surgeon, daughter of a couple of parents with military background, working in the VA hospital here in the Triangle as well. And Jasmine Navarre, her freshman uh, sister on this squad, also starting. Scott Campbell really loves her game and says her ceiling is just about as high as India's. We'll see if Milbrook holds here for the final shot. This is something they have been working on in the practice the last couple of days. For this kind of situation and score moment. Pass into the corner. This is Ramey for three. Rebounded by Apex Friendship. Six seconds to go. They may get a crack here. Sign into the front court. Lobs it down low. A leaping layup by Navarre at the horn. And Apex Friendship, the final seven of the quarter to take a six-point lead. How is that? for Stanford Cardinal future athleticism. What a finish with the clock ticking down. The location by sign, Navar in midair to give the Patriots a six point lead after one. Well, 
in the Apex Friendship Spirits. Their scorekeeper with the fancy creative headgear. <laughs> Six point lead for Apex Friendship. Second quarter begins. And this is Indy Navarre, and she picks up right where she left off. The layup at the horn, a bucket six seconds into the second quarter. Jay, she already has 11. She's been dominant, and Millbrook has to find a way to slow her down, double team, get the ball out of her hands, but especially stop the fast break where the Patriots have been lethal. The biggest lead of the game now for the Patriots. This is Douglas harassed, got it back and in trouble. And they're putting Navarre right now on Douglas. Navarre a little late to recover. She goes down. Douglas then drives and banks it home. Navarre closed out a little bit late in the sideline, lost her balance, and good recognition by Douglas to attack. Nice job with the head fake to get her up in the air and then easily gets in the paint. And there is Caitlin Littlejohn off of the bench. Her first points. And a 22-13 lead for Apex Friendship. Now Douglas and Navarre on each other. It'll be an interesting matchup. This is Galloway. This is a three. There's Navarre diving down the lane for the rebound and brings it up the floor. Navarre into the corner. Up fake by Coleman. And now they jump and switch at Coleman. Douglas chasing her. She gets by her and then a foul in the paint. And right now, the Patriots offensively maybe a quarter step faster than Millbrook's defense in terms of what they're doing versus the defensive recovery. Well, they've been able to dribble away from the pressure, and when they have, they've gotten into the paint, and then the double team has to come up. It's allowed other players for the Patriots to be wide open because Millbrook is having to kind of come back and play help defense. And Coleman at the free throw line for the Patriots. The North Carolina Department of Public Safety free throw line. Go to ncdps.gov slash careers and start your new career. One more coming for Coleman. Talked with Scott Campbell prior to the game on the bench about an hour before tip-off. He said, I'm nervous as crap. <laughs> he has not been to a state championship game in 16 years. He's coached for 35. If the Patriots win, he'll take a team to the state finals for just a second time in almost four decades. They lost to South Mecklenburg back in 2006, and he knew immediately we lost by seven. Well, this is a big game for both programs. Scott Campbell has had such a great career. His team's kind of been building to this point. A good pass, but mishandled by Douglas. A turnover by Millbrook, who now trails suddenly by 10. This was an 11 to 10 Millbrook lead only a couple of minutes ago. There's the hard attack by Sign, but called for a travel. But for Dan Courtright, you're just wanting your team to settle in, run some offense, run it through Douglas as normal, and chip away at this 10 point deficit. It'll be interesting to see Cole coming up, bringing the ball, but how Millbrook strategizes with Douglas being the point guard or playing off ball. And again, Douglas tries to split a double team, lost the handle, and Apex Friendship gives it right back. Second time we've seen that. But what the Patriots are doing, they're putting Navarre right on Douglas, out on the perimeter. Wildcats are trying to screen her off, and then a double team attacks Douglas defensively. Well, another weapon on the interior is Corey McLaughlin, six foot three, very athletic. They've got to get her involved down on the block. And she's number 20. There is Ramey plays it out front to Galloway. Ramey on the dribble drive. Douglas, a contested three, and there is Andy Navarre, the uncontested rebound. Apex friendship by 10, and that was partially blocked out of the hand of Marley Beam, and then a takeaway by Douglas, and Millbrook wants to run. This is where Millbrook is really dangerous. Ramey, good ball fake, and a nice little soft touch on the bank shot for her first point. And they've got to find more opportunities out on the run. Really good job by Douglas leading the way, and then the shot fake to get a better shot by Ramey. Little John goes against Ramey, nearly carried it. And now it's Navarre against Galloway. And Navarre trying to clear things out. And now we get a whistle. 
And we get a timeout taken by Apex Friendship and Scott Campbell. Eight point lead for the Patriots, 443 left in this first half. What did he see that required a little, little huddle? Well, I think he just wanted to get his team together and make sure, say, hey, listen, we went on a big run, lead is eight points, let's get a solid possession, let's get a bucket, and then we can set up the press. But I think he just wanted to get his team over to the sideline and make sure he sets up a good play, keeps the spacing, and then you have the driving lanes wide open, especially when the movement comes up and brings pressure. All right, stay tuned for the NC 529 High School Hoops halftime report. First half highlights and a whole lot more. NC 529. It's never too late or too early to start saving for education. Well, the Patriots were hoping to get a shoot around in this gym earlier today. They got here about 245. They couldn't take one at home because there's a band competition at Apex Friendship High School. 37 <laughs> bands were there and took over their gym. Short little jumper in the lane by Indy Navarre. We can talk about all ball game. The shot fake. You get the defender up and then you find a better look. Each side really utilizing that head fake to get the defender off balance. Back to a 10 point lead for a moment. And there is Ivory Galloway with her first, or probably uh, Corey McLaughlin with her first point. And I like the two man game. You put Douglas and McLaughlin on the same side, and with her height down low, she's a difficult matchup. All right, Jasmine Navarre back on the floor for the Patriots. There's the kick out. Sign knocks down a three. Such a good three point shooter, especially when you get the drive and dish to the outside with her height. She can shoot over the defense. A nice high arcing shot. Biggest lead of the game 11. This is Galloway. Wide open three. Doesn't get the roll. And Indy Navarre the rebound. And she'll push it ahead. We see the Patriots able to get to the rim or drive and kick. They've been knocking down the mid range and the perimeter jumpers as well. As we get a foul on Millbrook with 342 in the first half. Apex Friendship leading by 11. Lay State is first half. Today's halftime report brought to you by NC 529. It's never too late or too early to start saving for education. There's Dan Courtright, the second year at the helm of the Millbrook women's basketball program. His wife is an English teacher at Millbrook High School. They actually met while teaching up in Alexandria, Virginia several years ago. And Millbrook down by 11 as they try to carve into this deficit before halftime, Jay. Well, this is going to be a big 341 left on the clock. They've got to gain some momentum, cut into this lead. They have been doing a better job getting back in transition defense. Oh, and Navarre on almost a jump ball on that pass from out of bounds gets knocked over. Accidental foul charge against Ivory Galloway of Millbrook. And that's the seventh team foul on the Wildcats, so the Stanford Carlo crew will shoot the one and one. Both players fighting for the ball, just too much contact. Navarre had position. So Navarre, who just went beyond 2,000 career points in the Elite Eight win over Green Level, will have one more. She now has 14 in this first half. We talk about the strength of the SWAC. There's one more free throw from the North Carolina Department of Public Safety free throw line. In the East region, you go into the semifinals of the Elite Eight. Three of the four teams represented came from this league. Apex Friendship, Panther Creek, and Green Level, our neutral side host here today. They were beaten by Apex Friendship 50 to 33. They were hoping to be playing in this game. This is Douglas. Again, two defenders close her out and force the ball out of her hands. The Patriots are trying to let somebody else beat them. And we get a foul on Apex Friendship here. But that appears to be the game plan right now for Scott Campbell. Jasmine Navarre collects the foul. And I guess the question is, are there enough offensive weapons on Millbrook's team? If it's not Rachel Douglas doing the damage, are there enough weapons to come yep. back and beat you would be the mindset of the Patriots. Well, the key is going to be you've got to make open shots. You have to execute on your free throw opportunities. 
And also, you're going to have to create some turnovers to try to get easy buckets in transition. Yeah, that's where Millbrook has looked yep. at its best and most comfortable. Out in the open floor, grabbing a quick rebound, forcing a live ball, turnover, and getting down the floor. They have a suffocating defense. The Patriots have done a pretty good job of handling it so far, but that's where Millbrook really has to just turn up the pressure. And coming off of that made free throw, they set up the press. So now we'll see how the Patriots handle it. Navar, I don't think that was deflected. Navar throws it away. So an effective press right there by Millbrook. 12-point deficit staring at the Wildcats. They won the state title back-to-back -back years in 2012 and 2013, and again three years later in 2016. No contact there, and it's going to be a foul as Douglas was knocked off for mornings. That foul goes on Apex Friendship. There's good, one on Victoria's side. good spacing by Millbrook and then Douglas. You just see the power and she initially with the first step beat the first, de first defender and the sign came over to try to help. Well, a couple of years ago, 2020, it was Millbrook beating Apex Friendship in the fourth round of the playoffs. But again, that would have been with Amy DeVar as a sophomore. Douglas is a freshman. There's a little reach. Felicia Taylor, our referee today. And saw some light contact on the perimeter again on the side. That'll be her second. The Patriots extending their pressure out really quickly. Last two possessions, two fouls. So that's the last non-shooting foul taken by Apex Friendship. Inside three minutes for the half. Patriots by 12. Douglas trying to get back involved. The kick to Galloway, and the long rebound run down by Clark of Millbrook. And now we'll see about the recovery defense here for the Patriots. Douglas still working against Navarre. She'll take her baseline, feel the double team coming as an offensive foul on Douglas. That's number two, Jada Coleman, the weak side defender, sealed off under the rim and took it. She had an eye on her man, an eye on the ball, and then she just slid over, got on the baseline and set up. So two fouls on Douglas, remains on the floor with her team down by 12. Kind of a sticky moment here for the Wildcats. Press broken, short jumper missed by Anderson on the baseline. And the dribble, well, that's a dangerous poke away there by yep. Douglas from behind. Knocked it out of the hand of Sime, but Douglas did that with two fouls. Yeah, and she's got to be really careful because she cannot afford to get that third foul before they get to the halftime break. Well, that pass almost led Jasmine Navarro in the backcourt. Sister should know better. A little back cut, sister to sister, and the wow. reverse finish by Indy Navarro. They won't have many more opportunities <laughs> to execute that as teammates, but that was a thing of beauty. Uh, that's just chemistry between those two and knowing where they're going to go. Stepping through, contact by Victoria Sign. That's going to be the third on the Patriots Jr. As Cole drives in, she just kind of went to the side of the body. There we go. Look at this cut back door. Sister, sister. <laughs> little TV show. Good job by those two working together. Set up the defender and then go right towards the hoop. How many times do you think they've executed that in the gym, the playground, the backyard driveway? Countless. One more free throw coming. Of course, tonight, Cole. Go to ncdps.gov slash career. Start your new career. The North Carolina Department of Public Safety free throw line. Apex Friendship, 32. Millbrook, 19. So a pair of free throws from Cole. And she gets the foul line more than anybody on this Millbrook team with the exception of Douglas, and she's just a freshman. Freshman on freshman here. Jasmine Ibar against Cole. And Cole, look at that takeaway. She fell over, saves it, and a break here for Millbrook. And with the left hand, oh, that almost went down. And Sanaya Cole and the Millbrook Wildcats showing some fight late in the second quarter. Oh, there was a ton of contact. I mean, surprise, no foul was called on either side, but Millbrook takes advantage of it. And Cole goes all the way in to get to the line. Oh, what a takeaway by Galloway out near midcourt. So a couple more free throws for Sanaya Cole. 
Trying to get Milberg to within 10. And she is a very polished free throw shooter. And there's the Scott Campbell's reaction there on a lot of heavy contact that we played through until the finish. One more from the NCDPS free throw line for Cole. And quietly, Millbrook four yeah. straight from the line down 10. And doing a good job coming back and their defense leading to offensive opportunities. And this is the area where they can turn things around defensively with their pressure. Coleman across the lane. And Millbrook wanted to travel. Instead, it's going to be a foul on the Wildcats. And it will be a shooting foul. Yeah, that foul goes against Corey McLaughlin. The lane just Number opens two. up. McLaughlin had to come over on help defense, just couldn't get there in time. Coleman now three of five from the line. Eleven point lead for Apex Friendship, the top seed in the East. Millbrook the two seed, and then a couple of free throws knocked down. Like, tell you what, there's. There's great representation for both of these schools, both of these yep. communities here today. And this is a gorgeous gym at Green Level High School. Dribble drive, pull up from the mid-range, missed. And the rebound grabbed by Jasmine Navarre. Ball fake out of the corner, and there's a short little pass. Jumper is missed by Anderson. Lewis Ball springs back into the hands of the Patriots. And Indy Navar left open up top. Oh, did the ball deflate? <laughs> it goes down for Indy Navar. Uh, when you're a superstar, you get the roll. Good job with ball movement. And then the Patriots just being relentless on the glass to give Navar an opportunity from beyond the three point line. And now the biggest lead of this regional final at 15 as we're inside 40 seconds for the half. Indy Navarre now has 19 of Apex Friendship 37 points. And it's back in her hands. Another three from the wing this time. Back to back by Navarre. And Apex Friendship pulling away in the final two minutes of the second quarter. And she's feeling it. She didn't let the clock wind down and take the last shot. She had an open opportunity fired away. Milberg needed that one. Galloway too strong. Rebound squirts over the end line and it will stay with Milbrook. Indy Navarre, 13 points this quarter, 22 points in the game. Worst case scenario for the Wildcats and Dan Courtright. And she's been efficient. She's also dished the ball to her teammates, leading the fast break. She's protected the basketball. She's really done it all, but she's made such good decisions on the offensive end. Boy, how badly do the Wildcats need a bucket here? Final 10 seconds, down by 18 all of a sudden. Douglas works on Navarre, gives it up. Challenge three by Clark out of the corner, no good. And Apex Friendship rips off the final eight points in the final 90 seconds of the half. And they have opened up an 18 point lead going to halftime. And work to do for the Wildcats. But Scott Campbell's Apex Friendship Patriots are in line for their first ever state championship appearance 16 minutes ago. Stay tuned. The NC 529 High School Hoops Halftime Report is coming up. Highlights and more. NC 529, never too late or too early to start saving for education. In the Navarre, a 13-point quarter, 22-point half, and the Patriots two quarters away from a spot where they've never been, a spot for the state title. Final Apex Friendship leading Millbrook by 18. You're watching the NC 529 High School Hoops Halftime Report. And now time for the Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week. Tatum and Atkinson is proud to present the My RDC High School Hoops Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week. From Millbrook High School, the Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week is Makaya Braswell. Makaya is a two-year varsity basketball player and carries a 3.6 GPA. Makaya is academic all-conference, a member of National Achievers Society, a National Honor Society nominee, and serves as a YMCA camp counselor. 
from Apex Friendship High School. The Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week is Patrick Sands. Patrick is the basketball team captain, a member of the National Honor Society, and carries a 4.63 GPA. Patrick volunteers for Appalachia Service Project, Miracle League, Catholic Parish Outreach, and Family Promise. This All-Star is now entered for a $3,000 scholarship at the end of the season. Congratulations to our Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athlete of the Week. Tatum and Atkinson, injured in a wreck? Call the heavy hitters. There is the score, halftime of the 4A Regional Final in the East. Top seed Apex Friendship with a huge run down the stretch of that second quarter is open up an 18-point lead on Millbrook. Patrick Keenish, Jay Stone, also back with you. And Jay Milberg methodically got back into the game with some free throws late in the second quarter. Cut it to 10, but then back-to-back, back-breaking three-pointers by Indy Navarre. Yeah, and it was led because of her fast break. She pushed the pace and then found open three-point shooters. She did a nice job all game playing with pace and creating opportunities for her teammates. All right, so the question in that locker room for Milbrook, how do we get back in the game? Well, I think two things. You've got to get turnovers, get easy buckets of your own in transition, and then play inside out. Get the ball into McLaughlin. Let her go to the hoop or create a double team to get it out to Douglas. All right, so that's the state of affairs here. Boy, Scott Campbell was nervous as crap before the game. How's he feeling now? He's 16 minutes away from taking the Patriots for the first time in school history to a state championship game. Long way to go, though. Well, halftime, Apex Friendship 40, Millbrook 22. More of the NC 529 Halftime Report coming up. fans in very good moods right now. Halftime of the 4A Women's Regional Final. The winner will take on Chambers next Saturday for the 4A state title. 40 to 22 Apex leads Millbrook at halftime. Jay, let's take a look at some first half highlights. Yeah, from, the, of Indy Navarre. yeah from the beginning of the ball game, Navarre took over. She got to the hoop whenever she wanted to. We saw her outside shot from beyond the three-point line. The fast break opportunity where she led her teammates to easy buckets. That was key, and then this is just the creativity to get to the hoop. A big first quarter for Navarre, a larger second quarter. 13 of her 22, and consecutive three-pointers down the stretch. Rachel Douglas was a factor, not as big of a factor as Milbrook needs, though. Yeah, and for her, she's got to find a way to get off the double teams, but she's so athletic. She finished, played through contact. She's got two fouls, so she has to be careful in the second half, but you can see her talent and how easy she makes it look scoring the basketball. And she had nine in the opening half, but a tall mountain to climb for Millbrook. There is Indy Navarre, the Stanford Cardinal future with an 18-point lead. Second half coming up. Sixteen minutes away from a state title appearance. Apex Friendship leading Millbrook 40 to 22. And here we go. Millbrook will have possession to open up the third quarter. And one pass and a three-pointer miss. But there's Douglas for the rebound. And grabs another miss. And will not be denied. We'll head to the free throw line for Millbrook. First five minutes will be so important for Millbrook to cut in this lead, but really set the tempo coming out of the break with the adjustments they have to make. I like the relentlessness on the glass by Douglas after the miss. The third foul on Jasmine Navarre. So Rachel Douglas will head to the free throw line for Millbrook. We're certainly not wasting any time, right? As she has one more coming from the performance CDJR free throw line. Performance CDJR of Clinton. Performance piece of mind. I mean, it was an inbound pass from midcourt into the left corner for an immediate three and then two offensive rebounds. Every possession at a premium, but time is not on their side either. Yeah, and they're going to have to get going quickly because even though you still have two quarters, this is a talented offensive group for the Patriots. So you've got to find a way to maximize your possessions and really do all the little things like crash the boards and get the offensive boards to get second chance. Hey, an offensive foul has been called against Indian Navarre of Apex. Friendship right there. Felicia Taylor saw something she did not like. And that is foul number one on Navarre. So right back to Millbrook. Just 
Couldn't have been a better script to open up this third quarter for the Wildcats. A couple of quick free throws, offensive foul on the Patriots, and get the ball right back. And right back in Douglas's hands, puts her head down, lost it, got it back. She wanted some contact. Another offensive rebound, that stick back will not go on the inside from McLaughlin. And now we get a tie up. This physical down low is going to go the way of the Patriots with the possession arrow. Each side just battling down low, very physical. Well, do you get the sense that Dan Courtright, the head coach of Mobra, challenged yeah. his team at halftime? I need you to be as physical as you could possibly be. Well, I think that was the message that we have to really make sure we get physical and be tough, especially in the paint on the boards and on the defensive end. All right, so it's in the hands of the Patriots with a 16-point lead. This is Jasmine Navarre playing with three fouls. Coleman around a little bit of traffic. Bean gives it up. And finally in the hands of Indy Navarre, who's working now against Ivory Galloway. She'll attack and get fouled. Well, good body control there by Indy Navarre because she almost landed with the ball still in her hands before the shot was released. And she's such a smart basketball player. The sweep fake and then knows that she can get contact at the very least, she can get to the line, but she tried to play through it, just held onto the ball. She was going down, was almost able with her upper body strength yeah. to knock it in. That foul on Galloway. One more from the performance CDJR of Clinton free throw line. Performance peace of mind. 23 now for Navarre. And the lead is back to 18. Milberg led late state his first quarter. Apex at the end of both quarters, Jay, some big offensive gut punches against the Wildcats. And the three-pointers were huge just to really knock them back. This is McLaughlin with the left hand. Nice attack, but can't finish. But Douglas can't either. And finally, the rebound claim, but then lost right back to the Wildcats. Douglas got fouled. That would have counted. And Douglas heads back to the free throw line. No question the Wildcats are exponentially tougher and more aggressive on the glass in the first couple minutes here than we saw that entire first half. And they're showing fight. Dan Courtright, such an excellent year this year. His team uh, doing on the offense and defensive end, and that was the message at the halftime break. You can see it by the play. Yeah, we didn't need to be inside the locker room. And so far it's working, but again, a long way to go as we get a timeout taken by the Patriots. With a 17-point lead, I think Scott Campbell wants to rally his troops and just kind of explain hey, what yeah. he's seen on the sideline the first minute and a half because Milberg's not going anywhere without a fight here. And they're going to come back here, especially on the defense end, and really turn up the pressure. A smart timeout, Scott Campbell. You've got a big lead, but you do not want to let the Wildcats gain momentum and gain confidence coming back in the game. Scott, we're athlete. Brought to you by Tatum and Atkinson. So if you're injured in a car wreck, call the heavy hitters. 42-25, Apex friendship leading. And no matter how big the lead, no matter how big the deficit, head coaches, managers, whenever you're leading a sports group, you never assume anything. You don't assume an easy win. You don't assume a loss. You're coaching until the game's over. And you know that was the, the message delivered by Scott Campbell. Hey, don't look at the scoreboard here up by 17 points. Milbrook is too quality of a squad, and again, they know how to win close games if they get back into this one. Douglas makes a pair, interrupted by the timeout. She now has 13. And here's the pressure from Milbrook, which did have a little bit of impact on the Patriots in the first half. And they break it to Bean. Jasmine Navar open for three, in and out. Offensive rebound, and Anderson will reset it. And Jasmine Navarre would like another look. That was a clean look on that missed three. And this is Jasmine. Nice spacing by the Patriots. Coleman, pocket picked. Taken away by McLaughlin. And the Wildcats a rare chance to run, but who takes it away? Navarre. And we get a whistle, though, way off of the play. And that's going to go on Indy Navarre of Apex Friendship. The official closest to the play let it go. The one on the baseline on the other side of the floor saw some contact. She just jumped it. Falcon was bringing it up. Let's see if there's contact. Yeah, I mean, oh, she, she got her she got her chin, it looked like, with her shoulder. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that trailing shoulder landed sharply. And McLaughlin still feeling the after effects. So Douglas will throw in. Milbrook down by 16. And boy, where is Douglas throwing? Wow. I, I thought that pass landed on the sideline. I think it did. We've seen a couple of very errant passes by Douglas under no duress. Just misfiring a target by several feet, and that's a costly turnover by the Wildcats. I mean, there was not a teammate within you know, five or six feet of that pass. Down by 16. You don't want to give Apex Friendship any gifts. And there's a takeaway, though, by Douglas, and here come the Wildcats. Carter Ramey, a beautiful lead, and Cole couldn't finish. And the Patriots want to run. Navarre against three defenders. Offensive foul on India Navarre. And she now is in a little bit of foul trouble herself. Well, the foul's racking up. She's going to have to change her game and be more careful because the importance of her on the court is obvious. She went in Douglas as she was moving backward. Just you see her there. She put up her arms and gave Navarre her chest, and that was a good call. A good job by her setting up. That's number two on India Navarre. Jasmine Navarre has three. Five already on the Patriots in the first two and a half minutes of this third quarter, which is concerning for Scott Campbell because you're talking now potentially a lot of Millbrook free throws for a very good foul shooting team. If you're Millbrook driving to the paint, force the Patriots to either foul you or you get easily the hoop, but the fouls are really going to play a part in the defensive effort. We'll see if they switch to his own. It looks like they're going to stay in a man to man. They played up high, Douglas. Works against Jasmine Navarre. Lob to the post. Good move with the left hand. McLaughlin misses from short range. Ramey kind of interfering. And contact again in the backcourt. It's getting a little bit a, a little bit tougher here in <laughs> the last three minutes. A lot of bodies flying, some inadvertent shoulders. What happened shoulders. at the halftime break, Patrick? <laughs> Both teams. I mean, they are fighting. Well, you'd Fouled. love to see the effort. Yeah, it's number three on Galloway for Millbrook. Victoria signed back on the floor for Apex Friendship with three fouls. She's wearing number 11. 16 point lead for Apex Friendship. They've only scored two points in this third quarter. It has been a rough third quarter. Little John the kick. Beam misses a three. And Galloway nearly missed the target on that pass, but Ramey saves the day. Douglas with some room to operate the pull up. Left it short. And more contact deep in the backcourt. Foul going on Millbrook. Well, there hasn't been a flow to the second half the way we saw in the first half. A lot of fouls. And each team. Trying to change the tempo and the defensive pressure is really the reason why because the urgency in the second half each side playing much better Yeah, the Wildcats are trying to turn this game into a little bit of a slugfest yep. challenging every pass attacking a lot of contact But they've only cut a couple of points off that halftime deficit faking little John And handled by Navarre So Navarre working on Robin Clark for one of the first times tried to Dribble handoff, loose ball. Jasmine Navarre barely able to save. And this possession not looking all that good here for Apex Friendship. Beautiful block by Douglas on the baseline. And now Douglas trying to give Milbrook some momentum here. Good help defense also by Cole coming over on the baseline. Still, though, the matchup is Douglas on the offensive side against Indy Navarre. Cole. Plays up top to Douglas, takes the screen. Ramey, a ball fake from three, drives in beautifully, and a huge block by side. They leave it out. This is Indy Navarre, and it's back to 18. It looked like a gimme layup for Ramey. Sign the huge block, and they run out for Navarre. Timeout from Apex. It's back to an 18 point lead for the Patriots.
LJ teams in North Carolina and around the country don't have opportunities to win state championships by a superstar player and a superstar player alone. We just saw one of the role players, Victoria Sign, with a huge block, a switch yeah. in momentum for the Patriots. Uh, it's a deep Patriots team. Each team, very deep, versatile, a lot of key parts. 18-point lead for Apex Friendship. Trying to reach a state championship game for the first time in school history. School has only been in existence for a little more than half of a decade as Douglas misses the pull-up. Andy Navar grabs the rebound. And Navar, 26 points in this regional final. And we're going to travel against the Patriots. And the pressure from Millbrook again, I mean, it's impressive. They can lock you up with their length on the defensive end and just making it difficult to get the ball yeah. before. What's also impressive is how Scott Campbell is sitting on the sideline for Apex Friendship. I've never seen a coach like that. It's like he's ready to receive a pitch in a big league game. He's sitting on that left foot. The right leg is extended. I feel like he's maybe at a movie theater. He's kind of <laughs> hanging out, relaxed. But a couple of in-close chances missed by Millbrook. I mean, he's just missing the, the beanbag chair. <laughs> That's the ultimate comfort. <laughs> Navarre, oh, that was a beautiful leave for Marley Beam. She was not expecting it on the baseline. Well, when you have a player as talented as Navarre is, you need to be ready for everything. You expect her to take every shot when she gets in that close, but she was able to kind of carve out a pass against three defenders. And she has such good vision, and she's unselfish, too. If she mm. finds an area to, to operate, she's going to look for her teammates. 18-point lead for Apex Friendship, Millbrook basketball. Douglas, all of her scoring in this third quarter have come from the free throw line, and that's going to be a tie-up. I think Navarre got on top of that one. Good job, Navarre coming over on help defense. Got her arms in there, but did not hit with the body. Again, critical with her foul situation. So Ramey plays it in. Pass gets back to Ramey. A couple of ball fakes. When Milbrook needs to execute on every possession. Down by 18. Scrambling a bit here. Clemens didn't get the bank shot to go. Offensive second crack here. Clark across the lane. And she will shoot a pair of free throws. Again, just relentless on the offensive end. Millbrook, she drove in, finding contact with four fouls. Yeah, that's number four on Jasmine Devar. Credit to the Wildcats. I mean, they're getting second, third, yes. fourth opportunities on the offensive side, but still not getting a lot of easy looks, though, against the Patriots defense. Second point of the game for Clark. Jada Coleman back in as Jasmine Devar checks out with four fouls. One more from the performance CDJR of Clinton free throw line. Performance peace of mind. Clark makes a pair. And the pressure again by the Wildcats. This was an 18 point Patriot lead at halftime. Despite the tempo and the style being more favorable to Millbrook in this third quarter, they've only taken two points off the deficit as Navarre misses a tough layup. Clark the other way for the Wildcats. With Douglas out of the ball game, where's the offense going to come from for Millbrook? Yeah. That'll be the question. It's Nye Cole out, McLaughlin as well. Is Top it? three scorers. Clemens will kick. Ramey off the sideline. Fadeaway jumper too strong. And it's out of bounds. It will stay with Apex Friendship. Yeah, you wonder how long Rachel Douglas will stay on the bench here. Down by 16. Final 90 seconds or so of this third quarter. But 13 points of top scorers on the bench here. Mosler. And you can, you can yeah. see right here, Milbrook is just really searching. Where do we go? Who's going to step up? Because the defense still very stingy here for Apex Friendship. There's Navarre harassing Mosler. Tough jumper out of the corner. Hit the side of the glass. Offensive rebound, though, grabbed by Milbrook. And Robin Clark 
with her first field goal of the game. It's down to 14. And Millbrook's offense has really come on second chance opportunities, going to the offensive board, getting into the free throw line. That's where they've had success. And now it looks like Rachel Douglas is going to come back on the floor for the Wildcats. So Ramey is out, Douglas back in. I can't imagine there's a scenario where she's off the floor the rest of the way unless she falls out. Wildcats need her in a big way. Inside a minute, trap out of the corner and a blocking foul just before Navarre stepped on the end line. That was a good call down on the baseline. Navarre was trying to get around drop step and she couldn't and just too much contact. Let's see as she goes here, she's trying to get there you see the shoulder. Now there was that right arm that hooked around, but it was the body that knocked her off balance. And a foul on Clark, her second. Clark trying to slow down the approach of Coleman. No. Shot partially blocked away, no foul. And here comes Rachel Douglas and the Wildcats. Good look down low. It's a two different teammates who are there, but it's Nyla Brown, the recipient. And it's down to 12. This is where Milbrook has to do on the defensive end to try to create turnovers, get more transition buckets. And again, you have one of the top ball handlers on this Patriots team on the bench, Jasmine Navar. Into the corner, sign, no good. Rebound to the Wildcats, and they can get within 10 or 9. Clark plays it ahead, Clemens. Follow away jumper, yes, from Douglas. And it's down to 10, just like that, in the final 15 seconds of the third quarter. Don't look now, here come the Wildcats. A steal, Clark to the hole, gets fouled. Milbrook down 18 about two minutes ago at the line to cut it maybe to eight and we're not yet in the fourth quarter. And, and last three possessions, Milbrook doing all the little things, boxing out, playing good defense, communicating, creating turnovers, driving aggressively into the paint. Look at the fight here, nice pass and then just going in. As hard as you can, you draw the contact, get to the line, but an opportunity now to make it single digits before you go to the fourth quarter. There are no pushovers at this stage of the tournament. No matter how big the lead is, or in this case for the Patriots, was. Two free throws coming, first one knocked down by Clark. She has been an unheralded star this third quarter for Millbrook. Five points in the third for Clark. And one more free throw coming. Seven seconds left in the third. In and out. Navarre the rebound. Time for the Patriots. Working around three defenders. Lost the dribble. It's stolen by Milbrook. And they're happy to let the third quarter run out. And a huge run by Milbrook to give them a hope. Once down by 18, they've cut it in half with eight minutes to play. 44-35, Apex Friendship trying to hang on against Milbrook. Well, the knack coach of the year, Dan Cartwright, has injected Millbrook with hope. With the halftime speech, the challenge, and the third quarter execution. Millbrook scored the final nine points of that third quarter, Jay. They trail by nine, but there's a chance now for the Wildcats to play for a state title. And look at that harassment. A couple of pokeaways by Douglas. And we get an offensive foul on Indian of all. And Navarre covering her mouth before she says something that potentially gets teed up in complete disagreement of the call. Yeah, this is huge. I mean, for Rachel Douglas going one on one, you get the foul called, and the foul trouble now starting to play a huge factor for Navarre. She's going to have to be careful. That is number three on Navarre. Millbrook basketball trailing by just nine now. Douglas feeling it, gets around, sign, and banks it home to bring the Wildcats within seven. Closest this game has been since the late stages of the opening quarter. And there's a poke away, a steal by Jessica Clemens. Took it right away from Victoria Sign. This game has completely pivoted. Now the uncertainty is on the faces of the Patriots. Still playing, though, with a seven-point lead. Mosler into the corner. This is Clemens. 
Milberg tries to dig out an offensive rebound, can't get it. Amy Navarre against two defenders, attacks, banks it in, and it counts. And the Patriot star steps up as the yacht was taken on a lot of water. And she makes this look so easy, but this is such a high degree of difficulty going full speed and the ability to stop but as you're kind of flowing away you get hit and can still finish I mean that is next level type of athleticism focus and what a finish and a free throw coming for Navarre who now has 28 points but limited so far in this second half but can't finish the three point play running down the rebound is Sinai Cole and it's knocked out of her hand. Some contact on the sideline. We getting a foul here. And if so, is it on Navarre? If it's Navarre, that's her fourth. And she's becoming very emotional on the floor here, Jay. She's going in playing so hard. She's trying to get a steal. I tell you, Jay, you just can't put yourself in that position yeah. at that stage of the game. And, and I don't. I agree with her, but you're right. If you're in position like that, then you're letting it kind of be handled by the officials. And right now she's got four. She's going to have to change her game plan up, and they've got to find a way to protect her so she doesn't get number five. Nicole, though, cannot convert for Millbrook. Misses the front end. And there's a blocking foul. That will go on Douglas of Millbrook. She knew it. And number three on Douglas. So the two stars there, Jasmine Navarre, she's already playing with four fouls. India Navarre also with four for Scott Campbell's Patriots. And this has gotten really tricky for Apex friendship. Still, they'd rather be up by nine, but you're on the cusp of some major collateral damage with your personnel. Midway through the third quarter, Millbrook started turning up the pressure on the defensive and having more success creating turnovers and from that point it's been a different ball game apex friendship just had a huge cushion so they've been holding on and doing enough but now to close out the ball game the number one factor for the Patriots is you've got to keep the bar on the floor whatever it takes to protect her because you cannot have her pick up number five and for Millbrook the goal is the exact opposite try to attack and go at her to get her off the floor she's that important but Millbrook, I mean, the fight coming out of the halftime break, they didn't really execute at the start of the third quarter. They were playing hard. So they started to find a way, again, to do the little things that led to production, and that's why they've gone this run. All right, we'd like to thank United Rentals for powering today's game. United Rentals, you're building the future. We're here to help. 46-37, Patriots lead by nine. And again, resetting here. Both Navarre sisters for the Patriots have four fouls. Jasmine and India. Jasmine, the freshman. India, the Stanford commit. We'll be in Palo Alto this upcoming fall. And this has gotten really stressful for Scott Campbell. Dan Cartwright, meanwhile, has completely turned this one around for the Millbrook Wildcats. Credit to their physical play. They have taken it at the Patriots in this second half. And there's a deflection out of bounds by Galloway. But again, fouls piling up on critical pieces in this contest on both sides. Patriots bring it in. Indy Navarre and Jasmine Navarre both on the floor for Apex Friendship. Dangerous pass. Indy Navarre has it. She'll attack with those four fouls and back at him. And she felt it there. Instead of going all the way in, she pulled up with the jump stop. Very smart play. Did not get contact. Cole, meanwhile, Banks went in from the foul line. And back to a nine-point game. Now, again, the, the officials have been calling basically every little bit of contact in this second half. Dribble taken away. Steal by Douglas and Millbrook. Look how Navarre's playing off of her now with those four fouls. This is the matchup we've seen all game. Raymond nearly lost it. Battled to get it back. The extra pass goes to Galloway. In and out with a three. Would have been Milberg's yeah. first made three of the game. It would have cut it to six. That was three quarters down. And with each side playing so hard, driving and dishing so many double teams, when the ball is shot, you have to find a body kind of both teams just flying into the plane, but they're not a lot of physical play down there. And that's what it's allowing some of these offensive boards and long rebounds. So the Patriots will bring it in. And there's some light contact in the backcourt. And that's a foul you just don't want to take. McLaughlin for the Wildcats. 
that's number three. But we talked about this early in the game with the matchup, especially on the Millbrook offensive end. It's been Douglas working against Navarre most of the game, man to man, which was fine for the Patriots until now. Four fouls, the matchup is still out there, and Navarre now has to really play off defensively. And Navarre at the foul line for the Patriots. 30 points of the Patriots, 48. Here's number 31. And one more coming from the North Carolina Department of Public Safety free throw line. Go to ncdps.gov slash careers and start your new career. Back to a 10-point lead. And now 11. 50-39 Apex Friendship. Quick three out of the corner. That is short from Cole. And covering up the rebound is Jasmine Navarre. And the Patriots, oh, loose pass, jumping the passing lane was Clark. She almost caught that in midair before it even got to a Victoria song. Good anticipation. If I'm Apex Friendship, I'm slowing things down. I'm going to try to eat into this clock, spread the floor, and try to kind of melt this game down. You've got a huge lead. You still want to be aggressive. You have opportunities. But right now, the clock is your friend. All right, Cole back on the floor for Millbrook. So Jasmine Navarre will slow things up as she sizes up Galloway. Indy Navarre again with four fouls. Wanted to attack and then thought better of it. Sign in the lane. No good. Battle for the rebound. Look at Marley Beam get in there. And a travel though call against the Patriots. And now Beam complains. Well, this is just a fight for the ball. Did take a couple of steps while she had possession. So Millbrook gets it back, down by 11. Cole against Colbin. There's the lead pass inside McLaughlin. A beautiful pass, fed her right to the right side of the rim and, for the bucket. And good job by Millbrook highlighting the mismatch. And Navarre, gosh, another foul, but Navarre was playing off of Douglas. And then as McLaughlin came in the link, she backed off very smartly to get away. Now that's going to be number four on Galloway of Millbrook. And both teams are in the bonus. Nine fouls on the Patriots, seven on Millbrook. But if you're Dan Courtright, the head coach for Millbrook, you will put your team in a position to potentially yeah. steal this one when you were down by 18 at halftime. It's been a remarkable second half and performance by these Millbrook players. Within striking distance, and you've done the job. Now you just got to close it out here, and you have momentum on your side. That's a clutch free throw by the freshman, Jasmine Navarre, who Scott Campbell thinks could be just as good. Different kind of game than India, her older sister. But she will become the star of this Patriots team next year. Big free throws made by Navarre. Milberg down by 11. But boy, it feels a whole lot closer than that right now. They enter. Douglas, tough shot. Might have been partially blocked. And there's another tough offensive rebound. This one grabbed by Clark. McLaughlin on the approach. Will shoot some free throws. But how many times have we seen it in the second half, Jay? Everybody not only just going to the glass, <laughs> going with commitment and determination to get offensive rebounds. Nice play by McLaughlin going in. Knowing the foul trouble, Apex Friendship's in. She says, I'm going to go all the way, and either you're going to foul me or I'm going to get to the hoop. So at the line is Corey McLaughlin. Four points in the game. Back to a 10-point spread. One more coming from the NC DPS free throw line. What does Yoda saying? Do. There is no try. <laughs> Do get offensive rebounds. Do not try. Big free throws there by McLaughlin. 440 left in the fourth quarter. Patriots lead by nine. Navarre harassed a bit in the backcourt. Press broken. Anderson takes it hard. Misses, though, the layup. But there's an offensive rebound by Jasmine Navarre. And Anderson wants it back. She just missed the layup. This is Jasmine Navarre, long distance, no. Rebound knocked loose, right into the hands of Sign, and she misses from short range again. And it's Millbrook ball, down nine. Into the corner, pass it on the three. Clark attacks and lays it good. Robin Clark with eight points for Millbrook. 
And the Wildcats within seven. And they're coming on strong, doing all the little things again. Now they can set up their defensive pressure. Navarre on the handoff, some contact, and a steal. No foul. Cole, the run out. And leaves it out for Clark. And Milberg now can get it within five or four. Get the Biggest ball to possession of the game. Yeah, give the ball to your best player, set up a pick and roll. And here's Douglas attacking, gets to the hole. Too strong. Rebound, Apex Friendship. Nobody back defensively. Here's Jada Coleman. And it's back to a nine point game. And a timeout taken by the Patriots. 3.20 remaining, fourth quarter. Who saw this one coming? The Patriots holding on as Millbrook is putting a rush for the ages. Still a nine point lead for the Patriots. Let's take a look at today's air experts seating, including play of the game, Jane. A good job here on the defensive end. It turns into offense. This was critical to regain momentum. India Navarre doing on both ends of the court. Been a great atmosphere, outstanding ball game. We figured it was going to go to the end. Critical late game situations, possession by possession is going to be so important to close out the ball game. Right. Air experts, schedule your $59 winter tune up today at yourairexperts.com. Milbrook with the basketball down by nine. They find Douglas in the mid post. The kick to the corner. Here's Robin Clark again darting the hole. Missed the layup too strong. And Andy Navarre the rebound for the Patriots. Both Navarre sisters playing with four fouls. Navarre 32 points for Apex Friendship. Angling in. Leaves it off. And the layup by Victoria Sign. Navarre's done it scoring, but did it with the dish right there. What a pass. The double team comes over to stop ball, and somehow she threads it in between the double team to sign. Lead back to double digits. Douglas lost the handle. It's loose. Still loose. Bodies on the deck, and then finally grabbed by Apex Friendship. Two minutes and 18 seconds left. Here is sign the take, and it will crawl over the rim. Four straight by side and some breathing room for the Patriots. Impressive last two possessions with good decisions. Nice job dishing the ball off and then sign going all the way. And Cole trying to create something. It will stay though with Millbrook with 203 to go. And in big moments, it comes down to decision making. It's so important that you make the correct read, the correct pass in Apex Friendship. The last two possessions have done it and them set themselves up with a great opportunity with 203 left. And Dan Cartwright, second year head coach for Millbrook, calls a timeout. It's a full where they had done it with their just tenacity on the offensive glass, their physicality from the start of the third quarter, cut an 18 point deficit down to seven and had possession and it was in the hands of Rachel Douglas. You called it, put it in your best player's hands and a big, huge possession it was didn't knock it down suddenly the lead grows back to 13. They've showed so much fight. It was just a huge lead at the break that you know you had that one possession and you just couldn't get over the hump and then kind of the momentum shifted back to the Patriots and still with 203 left 13 point deficit. Of course you're going to have to knock down a couple three turnovers but the key is going to be you've got to steal some possession get some turnovers give yourselves more opportunity and then if you're in a situation where you have to foul the Patriots you got to hope that they miss their free throws. Well there is so much pride and so much history with this Millbrook basketball program women's and men's and there are some of the men's basketball players who saw their season come to a come to an end it is a couple of days ago as well to Panther Creek and a tight tight loss but three women's state championship banners in the last decade for Millbrook including back to back in 2012 and 2013. Millbrook basketball trailing by 13. Need some quick hitting buckets here. They have not made a three all game. Here's a try by Douglas off the mark. And India Navarre with the rebound. And a foul on Millbrook. That'll be the ninth Millbrook foul. So this will be the final one and one coming for the Patriots. And for India Navarre, and she got four fouls. A lot of credit to her. She had to change up her game plan with the four fouls. Her team needed her, and she's played off on the defensive end and been more careful on the offensive side. Very smart play and good adjustments. 
32 points in the game for Navarre. Again, she just went over 2,000 in her storied Apex Friendship career on Tuesday. But these are the ones where you can start to hear the hammer hit the nail. Back to 14 now for the Patriots. But Scott Campbell, he will not rest easy until he's maybe on the bus. <laughs> I'm not even sure three zeros across the score and the clock will uh, comfort him at this stage. 15 point lead. Douglas misses a three. And there's Jasmine Navarre for the rebound. And Apex Friendship beginning to grab control on this one. Jasmine of our weaving through two defenders out front bumps off against another one down low that foul will go against Robin Clark and now two free throws forthcoming with every foul that Millbrook commits. Boy, what a job that Dan Courtright did yeah. to get his team just to believe that they could get back into this game which they did impressive and number two see 22 and three on the year what he's built at Millbrook. I mean, his team plays so hard. Such a fun style to watch with how hard they play on the defensive end and their attacking style on the offensive side. And again, they come into this game having won 16 in a row. It's free throw miss, but they're the Patriots that dig out an offensive rebound. Final minute and a half. Well, look at Scott Campbell coach up his team on that sideline. It's a game of keep away now. He just wants movement. He just wants dribble handoffs. Make the defense work, run some clock. And ultimately take the foul that Millbrook will commit at some point here. And it doesn't look like Millbrook has any interest right now in fouling. 20 seconds been taken off the clock here. And Navarre will bypass an open look and work the clock under a minute. Nifty dribbling by Navarre. Keeping the floor spaced. And there is the foul about 36 seconds later. Well, the Patriots have not played their final game of this season. And Scott Campbell is about to return to the state championship game for the second time in his 35 years as a head coach and the first time since 2006 at a different school. Ten points now for side. He said his wife is here, his kids are here, family and friends are here. He didn't eat with the team earlier today. Again, they tried to get a shooter out of their own gym. They had 37 bands there, couldn't access it. Principal said, I got some bad news. You're not going to be able to shoot around. So instead of joining some of his players who went off for a pregame breakfast slash lunch before this one, he was kind of on his own and preparing for this game and preparing for the moment. And he had to go back to when this program began, when the doors swung open, all they had were freshmen and sophomores. First year, they didn't even take their lumps. They went 0-19, and, and almost all those games were blowouts. And now the first two years didn't qualify for the postseason. They got to the first round of the playoffs in 2018 and 2019, first round knockouts. And then in 2020, Millbrook in the fourth round knocked out Apex Friendship. Last year, third round loss to Garner. And here they are now about to take out Millbrook and advance to a spot in the bracket that the school has never seen. He's been an outstanding coach for his whole career. And for him, what an opportunity to get back to the state championship game next weekend with this yeah. group that he loves so much. This is a fun group to yeah. coach. And he just loves how they play together. And that's the first sense of relief I've ever yeah. seen on his face this entire game. He is an emotional guy, such a warm and generous guy. You can only imagine what emotions will overcome his existence in about 53 seconds time. Sixty-three forty-five is the lead for Apex Friendship and now it looks like he's about to send in senior Riley Hamilton who has not seen the floor at all today to at least get her some time because you know the seniors on this program although they haven't felt the lumps from years and years ago have put in this great effort to believe that they could get to this spot and he wants to make sure that they get a couple of seconds on the floor final half minute Apex Friendship leading by 18. And one last foul taken by Millbrook.
So the Billbrook Wildcats who got here into this regional final after a two-point win in the third round over Garner, a one-point win in the regional semis against Panther Creek on Tuesday. And they're going to come up a little bit short against Apex Friendship. So subbing off, there goes Jada Coleman. Indy Navarre is done for the day, but her career is not over. 33 points for Indy Navarre, and she will have one last game with her kid freshman sister on this Patriots team, and they will play as sisters for a state championship. And they will take on Chambers on Saturday. The sixth seed out of the West knocked off Charlotte Catholic earlier today. And Chambers beat Garner last year for a title game, so they'll be back again. That's going to be an exciting game. Lead back to 20. This is an 18-point halftime lead for Apex Friendship as that one is banked home by Jessica Clemens. Millbrook cut it down to seven, but then denied. And the final seconds will tick off for the Apex Friendship Patriots on their way to the state championship game for the first time in school history. Six years ago, they were 0-19 in their program debut. Six years later, Scott Campbell, who's been there for every single game, will take the Patriots to either North Carolina or NC State, and Apex Friendship will play for its first state title. Final score, Apex Friendship 65, Millbrook 48. Patriots to the title game next Saturday. And we will have the trophy presentations and a chat with the head coach, Scott Campbell, who is heading back to a state title game for the first time in 16 years. That's when we return Apex Friendship on to the title contest. to the final apex friendship on the way to the state title game for the first time ever in school history 65 48 win over millbrook and jason hunter standing by with scott campbell and the apex friendship patriots coach your team turned it on in the fourth quarter started off in the first half you built that huge lead but when you faced adversity your team just found a way to get it done we did we did we kind of panicked for a little while there we regrouped in the fourth quarter, and that's what we talked about. We hadn't had a whole lot of adversity, so it was you know, interesting to see how we responded, and we responded well. So many players stepped up today. You got so many contributions on the offense and defensive end. How important was the effort from everybody on your team? I mean, we've tried to emphasize all year that whether you play two minutes, 30 minutes, all that stuff adds up. So. Just be, being in foul trouble and struggling at different times, our depth has been a huge part. So that was a huge factor tonight. And Coach, we'll be with you next week for the 4A State Championship at the Dean Dome. Huge victory, first time in school history. I told you after, before the ball game, I hope to see you after the game. What does it mean to you and your players? I can't even explain the seven years ago the thought of playing in a state championship. They deserve, obviously, all the credit they put into work. It's just it's a dream, a dream. Well, Coach, before you get to next week, we want to present you and your team with the High School Hoops Trophy. Congratulations on the win today. <laughs> well, there's a lot of hardware coming back to Apex Friendship. The High School Hoops Trophy and the Regional Championship and they will play for a state title six years after going 0 and 19 in their first ever year of basketball congratulations to scott campbell and the patriots of apex friendship well all of us would like to take a minute to thank the wonderful folks at air experts heating and cooling who make all these games possible for you we'd also like to thank all of the other great supporters for their contributions to high school hoops on my rdc 28. myspot.nc.gov nc529 performance ford and performance chrysler dodge jeep ram 
the North Carolina Department of Public Services and Tatum and Atkinson. We'd also like to thank all the participating high schools and their administrators for their continued support, Millbrook, Apex Friendship, and our host, Green Level. Next Saturday, my RDC and CW22. Tune in to watch 16 of the state's top teams in the state battle it out for the state's championship. The NCHSAA basketball championship coverage begins at noon. We will be there, as will Apex Friendship 65-48 over Millbrook Bear, the 4A East Regional Champions. For our crew, and Jay Soldhalter, Patrick Keene is saying so long. We'll see you next week from the Dean Dome. This is the big time, really say go.